Hello and welcome to a freebie free cast on Angel Gates. It's going to be a faction war today. Not intentional, but this is the replay that I got sent in. And starting off, we have MC Bin Laden playing as the Tech Marine. We have Cryptolio playing as the APO in mid. And at the bottom, we have Akina Pythons playing as the Force Commander. And that's going to be the Space Marine lineup. And on the left hand side, we have Adila playing as the Chaos Sorcerer. We have Freeman playing as the Plague Champion. And Ace of Swords playing as the Chaos Lord to be finishing up that Chaos roster. Stein. Off Ace is actually going for double heretics with a third heretic squad already on the way. Could be seeing some triple grenade launch heretics, could be seeing some quadruple grenade launch heretics. I'd imagine. Or actually, he might be even going triple heretics into blood letters in tier 2. I've actually seen that build or heard of people using that build. If you keep these triple heretics, you're allowed to bleed as much requisition as you want, nearly, but you spend all your power in focused onto tier 2 with maybe one upgrade on your Chaos Lord, but you try and hit tier 2 as quickly as possible and try and get some Blood Letters or Blood Crushers or both out in the field, multiple of them, and use the Triple Heretics come tier 2 to actually worship them and really support them very heavily, but already the Triple Space Marines here grouping up in mid, Doombolt's going down, Heretics unable to even get in there, unable to actually get in because of how much range damage there is from all these scouts and tactical marines, even the Chaos Lord, you can see how much damage that he's taking right now is actually struggling to get in, in fact he is actually going to go down, Force Commander's going to finish him off with his Chainsaw potentially, no 7 HP, 5 HP will go down, no 2 range fire, Heretics coming in here, Grenade Launcher Heretics is going to be coming in here for Ace of Swords and that Force Commander will be able to live overall but tactical marines are still prevailing in here, pushing in onto the natural VP of Red Team. Heretic's going to stop worshipping and start forcing melee now to these tactical marines, but now that Heretic's melee damage has been reduced, tactical marines are actually able to stand up much better in melee combat against them. Meanwhile, up top, the play champion going to be fighting some scouts. The scouts will use this garrison battle, given that the play champion does do damage over time with his bolter. But some more action still going down, and here the APO providing a lot of healing to all the Space Marine armies since they are all grouped up together, but Havoc's going to be entering the building here as well, outside the natural of all the Chaos players, and it's going to help try and defend the natural VP, or the natural VP is still not even capped in their favour, they do actually have control of the top VP, so this natural VP remaining neutral is going to keep the VP bleed neutral between both players, Chaos Lord gain resurrected there by Dilla's Chaos Sorcerer, Apo is running out, so they should be able to get out there just fine, there are two heretic scores on retreats, but can they do enough damage on retreat to actually finish off this Apo, in fact they're just going to to ignore him at this point. And if that initial Heretic Squad did focus down that APO, that would have been a very dead APO. But the Tactical Marines here with the Salamander color scheme going to be backing away here for MC Bin Laden, but at the same time, King of Pythons does actually have a Flamer on his Tactical Marines, is burning down the top generator farm here. And Red Team are starting to make their way up to the top, but it's not going to be happening in time as the generators have already been going down and the power node is most likely going to go down. These flame attacks are actually going to be running away, going to be running towards this most cornerly power farm to the wards, the left hand side. And if undetected, we'll be able to bash it down. Grade is going to get thrown, going to be catching out a couple of heretics here. Not going to do any, not going to wipe any heretics, but is going to kill about seven models and two blasts going off on retreat here. Really wants to kill these scouts in particular. But the Flame Attacks Comrades here for King of Pythons starting to make their way and trying to burn down this generator farm. I think that they should have maybe waited a little bit for all of Red Team to push and then going for the generator bash rather than trying to rush into it like this. And that way the Tactical Marines would have had a little bit more time to actually bash. But the Chaos Lord now armed with Combi Flame at Ace, not going to be rushing those demons immediately, is going to be buying some upgrades and going to get some Havocs as well, so actually hold the area. Kind of needed. I guess against triple space marines, otherwise the heretics are really not going to get into combat at all. It's going to be a single grenade launcher and Havocs and a combi flamer so far, so only 70 power is spent. Those tactical marines though for King of Pythons gained very low, all the generators have been burnt down except for one by the looks of it which barely survived. Tactical marines running away though at 100 HP. There's nothing else on their retreat path by the looks of it so they might be able to get out of there just fine. Meanwhile, top Doom Bolt's going down. Play Champion remaining in this building hasn't actually moved from that building throughout the majority of the game here. And there is six Havocs in total for the Chaos players on Red Team. A lot of suppression compared to Blue Team, who have only got the single Devastated Squad. Gone for more Tactical Marines and 
Gold for an ASM squad as well, and upgrades on scouts as well, but looks of things. Scouts going to be capping the same points as Tech Marine. But these devastators trying to focus down that play champion. All the sniper scouts here for MC Bin Laden. Sniper scouts will be a good purchase against Plague Champion and will be good to force him out of this building here. Plague Champion is going to go down if he doesn't retreat away. In fact, he might go down. One more hit might be enough. But they're not going to get that extra hit that they need. Going to be focusing down these CSM here of Freeman who are trying to force melee on these scouts. Taking a lot of damage here. Some more CSM coming in here for Adila this time. The CSM with the Black Legion color scheme. Meanwhile, at boss, some Cryptolia are going to be placing down a generator farm here. And players are starting to tech up two tier two. All the space ring players have started to tech up to tier two. Meanwhile, the chaos players, only Freeman is going to be taking up to tier two. Adila buying some more heretics. Ace going to be taking up to tier two. And I imagine that Adila is going to be taking up to tier two once these heretics are done. It's actually going to be purification valves here in the bottom side here for Cryptolia, which is going to be a nice purchase against the double melee heretic squads here of Ace, ASM as well. Going to be able to fight those heretics quite well as well, given that the heretics don't have the aspiring champion upgrade. At the same time, a power bash might go down here from Adila. Going to be forcing melee on that journey to farm with the heretics and going to be firing at range with the CSM. At the same time though, MC Bin Laden making his way back up with his Tech Marine and King of Pythons is pushing through mid here as well. Double Sniper Scout is going to easily pick off a mod on the CSM if they don't retreat. But the CSM do actually manage to get out of range before anything happens and the Dillers Havoc's now getting caught out a little bit. Plasma Devastator is going to be the first purchase in tier 2 and it's going to be for King of Pythons. Havoc's going to be losing the model, some worship going to go down, but worship does not affect friendly allies, it only affects your own units. Even if they are chaos units, it only affects friendly units. So this Nurgle worship down there isn't going to affect any of the teammates, and it looks like Purification Vial went off, but it looks like it actually done a bit more friendly fire damage to the ASMs compared to the Heretics here of Ace, but that APO taking a lot of damage. The Heretics running through though, the poison, going to be taking a bit of damage here, trying to actually get into the combat zone. And Ace really wanting this generator farm away from Cryptolia, at least destroying it so the blue team don't get a power advantage or taking it for himself so red team can actually get a power advantage. At the same time, Heretics trying to chase down these tactical marines here of King of Hyphens. While some scouts trying to push in, double auto cannon, triple auto cannon. Oh wow, the building just got destroyed here. That building has 2,500 HP as well. But a triple auto cannon, no, quadruple auto cannons, is it? Yes, quadruple auto cannons are going to destroy that building. Gonna destroy these scouts if they're not careful. But lucky for these scouts that the most of the auto cannons are not set up, but the plasma devastators don't going to get a perfect hit onto these heretics, but because of that Spryan champion, they will live overall some a shrine of Zinch and a shrine of Nurgle are placed up top as well. Wow, these triple auto cannons here for Freeman, who's just spamming the auto cannons by the looks of it. Destroying generators with single salvos here. Going to be destroying the entire generator farm, although for some reason decides to actually unset up and leave the power node. Or maybe the power node was unaccess unaccessible. A whirlwind is an excellent purchase here though for MC Bin Laden to actually counter the mass setup teams going down up top. Meanwhile, the bottom side, Ace is still trying to push through, who's going auto cannons himself, potentially. He has got an auto cannon there, an auto cannon in that build. There's going to be mass auto cannons here for all the Chaos players, potentially. Adila is also arming himself with two auto cannons. Could be another auto cannon to follow up the second auto cannon that he actually has. Play champion trying to push in here. The whirlwind has now been spotted, although the whirlwind has been spotted before anyway, by just uh, firing at the mass setup teams. But some Havocs barely escaping here, not actually getting low enough to be finished off here by King of Pythons. So he's actually going to go in for a generator bash to try to retaliate to the mass auto cannon push up on the top side. But some more auto cannons are coming in here. 332 VPs, 444 red team ahead in VPs, but behind in power, I would imagine, given the bottom generator farm did belong to blue team for quite some time. And still even having an extra generator farm down there as well, but the auto cannon's doing so much work. The grenade actually hits the back model and not the lead model here. And the auto cannon's just doing so much work against these tactical marines. There's also some more tactical marines up here. They could upgrade to a flame and sneakily bash the power. Since they've not really been noticed, the chaos sorcerer coming in here with the vestments of the warp and the sword of flame as well. A source gun's going for the capture at the same time. Meanwhile, tactical marines coming in to assist that tech marine here with the plasma gun. Plasma gun's going to be an excellent purchase here given that there's so much heavy infantry. Havocs are heavy infantry, so 
the plasma gun be effective if the Tech Marine can get close enough to actually use that plasma gun against them. Vehicles are really not going to be very effective whatsoever here given the amount of auto cannons. Even auto cannons coming in here for a sneak bash while at the same time tactical marines with a flamer bashing that left hand power and at top these shrines are still set up. The auto cannon set up in a bit of a weird position here mostly facing the building. Auto cannon set up in mid as well. ASM they're going to be jumping in there forcing one squad off. A second squad is going to get forced off I would imagine. Some heretics coming in for support though. But a merciless strike going to be forcing them off. Purification Vile is going to be doing friendly fire damage. Once again, the ASMs are going to be spreading that poison all over the ground. And CSM sets up in the area. Another also cannon sets up the plate. Champion coming in and some more also cannon support is coming down. But the ASMs are able to actually jump once again. Do need to be a bit careful on the Chaos Lord here. Armed with the Mantle of Hate. Allowing him to give energy to friendly units. Note that the Drain Life ability. Sorry, I'm getting that confused with the other armor, the tier 1 armor, and also with the icon of corn as well, a lot of healing available then for the Chaos Lord, Tactical Marines able to actually bash down the entire power on that left hand side, able to even get a decap on it as well at the same time, these Tactical Marines though, do have to run through the entire armies of all three Chaos players and might actually go down, CSM going to reclaim that power farm, and Red Team not really needing as much power given their build order choice, there's also um, weird thing going on with the UI there but that's just fixed itself but the mass auto cannon is going to be very effective against any kind of army a manticore if, <laughs> if it was available for a blue team though would heavily shut down this build but all the auto cannon is going to be setting up now outside the base here could even go in for a push onto the base auto cannons do actually they do full DPS to structures or base but Salamander's coming in once again, going to be entering the structure, that's a big mistake, this structure is going to go down if they're not careful, just like the initial structure which had the Devastators in it, I believe. But another Shrine of Zinch going to go up here, gives a 10% damage reduction if Ace puts down some Shrines, the Mark of Corn Shrines, then that's going to give a 10% damage boost. Those CSM just got absolutely destroyed in Mark Target and that Plasma Gun is just such a strong combo. And that Whirlwind taking a lot of damage here is definitely going to be going down. Some rear armor hits might be enough. One more Salvo is going to do it, but the Salvo isn't going to go off. The Chaos Lord might try to finish it off with his power melee up with his default weapon, but I don't know if that's going to be enough either. The Orsa Cannon is going to be setting up once again, going to be firing at these Tactical Marines here. ASM going to be jumping in here, but going to be retreating away. The Whirlwinds really need to go down here for the Chaos players in order for them to actually remain set up all the time. And Chaos Lord going to be immolating that building, going to be destroying <laughs> the bunker, or destroying units inside the bunker, that whirlwind also going down, Cryptolio forced away, back to base at the same time, King of Pythons really wants to go in for these power bashes, but it feels like these power bashes are not having too much of an effect, it will allow blue team to go tier 3 before tier 2, and um, before red team, but I'm not sure tier 2 is going to matter with the mass auto cannons on the map right now. <laughs> But these stern guard veterans are unable to even get out of green cover, unable to even start firing away at these auto cannons, just given the amount of damage that they will all dish out against them. And the shrine of zinc as well, giving the 10% damage res resistance to these auto cannon havoc set up under the worship in the area. Chaos Sorcerer trying to chase down these tactical marines here, who are trying to bash down the Jerry's to farm the sorcerer. Will easily be able to win that engagement. Some auto cannon havoc is getting extremely low. ASM trying to chase, will be able to finish them off. The ASM now switching focus to Ace of Swords, also cannon havoc, but then going to get forced off in the end. The APO as well, going to try and throw a purification vial, will actually get it thrown down, and poison is going to be spread all over the place. A shrine of Nurgle has also been placed up in the area allowing blue team or allowing red team sorry to reinforce on the field the p devs are actually a decent purchase against mass also cannons the p devs actually out range the also cannons and plasma cannon damage is extremely effective against heavy infantry they just need to actually land their hits now at the same time mark of each csm going to try and go in for the cap but actually forced off there by the second marine mark target with the double snipers and with the plasma gun is just an insane amount of damage and these tax comrades that were getting chased down by the Chaos Sorcerer are still running away here. p -Dev shot is going to be very strong here, hitting heretics square on, taking multiple models as those heretics did not have the Aspiring Champion. They would have been wiped completely. 258 VPs, 372. Oh wow, that building is getting absolutely smothered there with fire. If he needs to exit his sniper scouts right away. And Sniper Scout is going to take damage as well upon exiting the building as well. Look how much damage the building took. It was on 2,500 HP. It is now down to just 700. Scout is going to be entering the building up here. The Plague Champion with the Plague Fist, but no armor or pestilence to go with it. And the Tech Marine with a single salvo is forced off the field from triple auto cannons here from Ace and Adilla. 
Sniper Scouts unable to even get too close. I think Auto Cannons might have a similar range to Sniper Scouts. I don't know who actually has longer range. I think Sniper Scouts do, but not by much. For the Chaos Lord, going to be going in here. The Mass Auto Cannon still sets up in the area, just asking for a nuke. Now that the Blue Team are all taking up to Tier 3, are in fact all Tier 3, you could definitely see a nuke going off. And King of Pythons is getting a Land Raider at Redeemer. And I just don't think that it is the best choice at all. Given the amount of auto cannons, given how much auto cannons actually do to vehicles as well within a single salvo, the Land Raider Redeemer, by the time it tries to get close, it will go down. The Redeemer will help with a really conjoined push, but I think that the blue team needs to focus more on artillery rather than just trying to push. <laughs> the point blank P dev shot doing a lot of damage there. The P devs able to enter the Land Raider Redeemer, but look at that triple auto cannons working their way down to that Land Raider Redeemer and also cannon down here for Ace as well. Which is getting stopped by this turret, or might get stopped by this turret. But the water bomb is going to go down, but the Land Raider Redeemer hasn't even left base, so it's already forced off the field. But this auto bombardment is going to be catching out the Havocs inside the building, going to be catching out triple Havocs here for Freeman as well. Won't actually kill any units by the looks of it. The also cannons are inside the building is actually going to live. Freeman just needs to retreat back to base and he'll be fine overall. Also cannon as well at the VP going to get forced off and the plate champion with the pestilent strike is going to be able to capture that VP. Terminators with a cyclone missile launcher could be a really nice choice here and this is going to be a nice choice here. But I still think that there's other things that could have been purchased. I'm not sure about the Terminators. Look at how much damage the Terminators are taking from the Auto Cannons so far. Now they're going to have to sit in base and heal up, or if they stay on the field, they're going to risk bleeding a model or even losing the squad completely. I think that Mass P-Devs is actually the way to go to actually counteract the Mass Havocs, because Plasma Devastators do outrange Auto Cannon Havocs. And the Whirlwinds were in this choice as well, just needs to keep them a bit more protected and keep them like really inside your base and try and avoid them getting caught out by auto cannons. And use the buildings to this map to hide your whirlwind behind, not and not enter the buildings either, because look how much damage these buildings have already taken. There's one building up here, just 755 HP, and the other building is quite low itself as well. The also cannons all retreating away. The Shrine of Zinc and the Shrine of Nurgle is still up in the area. That Shrine of Zinc might even wipe these sniper scouts. They're going to actually go down here, going to get bled by that blue flame, and all the also cannons going up top for Freeman as well. The Shrine of Nurgle as well is taking a lot of damage. It's most likely going to go down to this tech marine and a predator for MC Bin Laden. I really don't think that's going to work either. You saw how much damage the Land Raider Redeemer took just exiting the base in this area. A predator will go down to a few salvos. Pedev sets up in the building here. Pedev is going to be effective but not in this building. The building is already taking so much damage here. A few more salvos in this building will go down 700 HP. If you actually force the tags on the building, you might have been able to finish off the building before the last model was able to actually vacate it. But that building, he's going to enter a different structure. Now this structure only has 1500 HP. If the sorcerer uses the cor coruscating flames on himself, you can actually burn the units inside the building. Just to use that sort of flame to clear buildings. Put the, put the coruscating flames on yourself and you burn the units inside the buildings. Although P-Devs are fairly tanky against the type of damage that the Coruscating Flames does, it will still do it enough damage that it might actually force your opponent to vacate the building or convince them to vacate the building. The Mark of Zinc CSM going to be stopping those scouts in mid. Meanwhile, all these also cannons just coming into the area. The Terminator Force Commander for Kina Python is going to be arming himself with the Lightning Claws. Some regular Terminators coming in here. These ASM now upgraded to Vanguard Veterans for Cryptolo, which is an excellent idea against the masses of heavy infantry here for the Red Team. Ape are going to come in the area. I think the Ape really should arm himself with the Power Axe as well. Power Axe would be extremely effective right now. And all these also cannons are going to get four stuff as Blue Team are able to actually push in through 258 VPs to 292. All these also cannons are now starting to get countered by the Vanguards, by these Terminators on the field. The Terminators, the ranged Terminators, not so much. If they force melee, then that'll be fine. And these P devs taking so much damage inside the building as well. Some Stand guard veterans coming in. If the PDEVs leave the building, the PDEVs will die. So the PDEVs need to remain in the building for as long as possible and hope that the ranged army here is going to be enough to actually finish them off. The Chaos Sorcerer does manage to get out there alive, but the plasma cannon shots onto the play champion. Going to get him killed. Going to be putting 
touch of Nurgle onto himself, which is currently bugged right now. The Terminator Force Commander going to be going in a little bit aggressively here. And he's actually going to be missing all of these auto cannons. Is going to be able to get in there now, but he's taking a lot of damage right now. Another orbs of bombardment going to go down. That Land Raider Redeemer going to be pushing in. Land Raider Redeemer going into his own orbs of bombardment there, catching out more friendly units than enemy units, I'd say. He's going to catch out one Havoc Squad, but at the same time, going to be losing that Terminator Force Commander. Potentially. Oh, wow. He's actually going to survive there with 32 HP. Play Champion eventually going to be going down there as well. And Land Raider Redeemer is going to try and push in. By the looks of it, but there's some corn worship to speedily get these also cannons back into the engagement here. And I'm not sure about this Land Raider Redeemer still. Even the Predator here got the improved armor placing, but it's already taking so much damage and has gained no XP almost from whatever it's done. The blue team really starting to get control of the map right now. Terminator's getting called in here for a dealer as well. 239 VP, so 259, the map is definitely in favour of blue team right now if you cut it across the middle, I guess. Red team are in control of this bottom power, two powers, but I don't think bomb two powers really matter too much. Although, given that red team are very low on power and bar tier 3, I'd say it probably does. But Terminator's Force Command going to be landing a special there. P Devastator is going to be going in, but going to be heavily outmatched here, taking a lot of fire from all these auto cannons. Terminator's Force Command needs to work on just focusing down a squad in particular. Heretics also in the area are going to be corn worshipping those Havocs so they can get out there a little bit quicker. Should maybe focus down the ones that are set up. We're going to be going for the Heretics instead. We should focus down everything else. Predator going in here. Going to be taking so much damage here. If all the auto cannons were to focus down that Predator, it would go down. In fact, Predator is going to go down. The Salvo does actually finish off there for those Havocs and the Predator will get taken down. But the Force Commander here getting kited around, taking so much damage from all of these auto cannons. Terminators in the area as well. That Force Commander is definitely going to go down. Terminators can just force melee onto him. Land Raider Redeemer as well. Trying to push in to the base. Actually taking down or nearly taking down one of the mid turrets. All the auto cannons can now just turn and face the Land Raider Redeemer and cut off its retreat path. Terminator is going to be forcing melee on it as well. Path is going to be very effective, and all the auto cannons for Ace of Swords going to be focusing down that Land Raider Redeemer, these auto cannons. So, gain very low. Frag Assault isn't going to do too much here, and at the same time, Cryptolio is also pushing into the base as well, going to be able to take down one of Freeman's auto cannon heavy weapons teams, or auto cannon Havoc squads. Going to be taking it down a second one. The Vanguard veterans with their power melee going to be very effective, going to be jumping in to combat here, going to be retreating away though. The Land Raider Redeemer has gone down now, and that Whirlwind is in a bit of trouble, needs to back away here. That Salvo though is not going to be enough to actually finish it off. Also can set up in the area, Vanguard veterans going to be retreating back to base, all the also can is trying to set up once again, and they show no no fear is used onto the Standguard veterans, which gives them 50% range damage reduction, and even then that 50% range damage reduction isn't helping out too much, it's helping out a lot, but... They're still forced off the field in the end, still unable to actually stand up against the masses of ranged fire available here for Red Team. Terminators, they're going to be able to pop down multiple models. These Plasma Devastators are going to be doing a good job at forcing off squad by squad each shot. A Whirlwind going in for King of Pythons, now showing rear armor, might actually go down here. He is getting some emergency repairs, but the rear armor here is going to be a bit too much, and as soon as it gets purchased, it's going to be going down. Uh, Lightning Claw Terminators now for Ace of Swords, going to be trying to fight these ranged Terminators. Vanguard Vestra is going to be jumping in. Imperial Abyss going to be catching out those scouts who do not want to retreat through this. It does heavy melee damage. Retreating through it is one of the things that you really don't want to do those scouts though going to be going down plasma devastators most likely going to go down as well terminators trying to retreat away the chaos lord also with lightning claws as well so much power melee damage another nuke is going to go off this time it's going to be going down onto cryptolia but angels of death is going to get used but the angels of death looks like it might not even be enough to save these tactical marines actually they barely get away there at the same time, an Orbital Bombardment going to go down in mid. Going to be catching out two Havoc squads and a Terminator squad. At the same time, the Chaos Lord, it looks like he might finish off this Whirlwind. Going to try Oh, the Sorcerer coming in as well with the rear armor hits to actually assist in that Whirlwind kill. And that's all the Whirlwinds down. Blue team losing so many units now throughout this engagement. More Lightning Claw Terminators, this time for a Dilla here. And the base is even down to just 6,700 HP. Cyclone Missile Launch is going to be interrupting all these Orsa Cannon Havocs, but all the Orsa Cannon Havocs are going to try and reset up again, but another Whirlwind coming out for Kina Pythons. This time it actually lives. Vanguard Vesper is going to be jumping in behind these Orsa Cannon Havocs, which is really smart. You don't want to even get into the center of them. You don't want any squads to actually fire whatsoever. And these Vanguards are going to be picking off multiple models here. They're going to be landing some sync kills as well, and they're just going to have the time of their life killing all these retreating Orsa Cannons here. 
going to be leveling up to level 3 fairly soon. I don't know why they've got a power fist upgrade, they should have kept the standard weapon that they came with since it's power melee and it's more effective against the heavy infantry here. But the power fist is very effective at picking up models still. But that also can do for Ace is going to be able to barely live the Librarian's range damage with the staff isn't going to be enough. And Terminator Force Commander now armed with a heavy flamer is kind of curious. But these heretics though taking a lot of damage from the charred ground here of that Force Commander. The Lightning Claw Terminator is doing so much damage against him. If he doesn't retreat out there in time he may go down. But some more auto cannons here. Some more auto cannons everywhere. I'm surprised the Sorcerer hasn't got the Sigil of Rift. If you you can Sigil Havocs, multiple Havoc squads, and they do remain set up. Although it's a very risky thing to do, and I probably shouldn't be recommending it to people to actually try. It can really pay off if you get a really nice Sigil, and at the same time you can also lose all your Havoc squads in having one bad Sigil. So. I thought that they might actually try something like that, but instead the Tome of Subjugation is going to be a much better war gear purchase given that there are Terminators here on the field for Blue Team. But another Land Raider Redeemer, this time for Cryptolio, MC Bin Laden was considering a Dreadnought, might even go for a Venerable Dreadnought, and a Venerable Dreadnought with its charge might actually work given that there are so many setup teams here, and given that none of these setup teams actually slow units down. The weakness to you, the Dreadnought would be that a last cannon can slow down and becomes extremely slow and unable to actually get out of combat situation. But given that these are all auto cannons, a venerable Dreadnought drops onto the back line might work, especially with Vanguard support to actually interrupt most of the auto cannons. That well when gains so low, going to be able to barely get away and King of Hyphens unable to even be in his base without getting focused down by all these auto cannons here. But the Force Bearer from the Librarian is a really nice idea to actually unset up all of these auto cannons and actually push them back as well. But he's trying to corner as well down here for Ace. Ace going to be pulling back his auto cannons here. And it's going to be a Land Raider Phobos now for Freeman. Freeman was the only Chaos player to not get Chaos Terminators. Is going to get that Land Raider Phobos instead. And the Phobos is going to be a nice purchase against the upcoming Land Raider Redeemer here of Cryptolo, which is currently stuck in base because of scouts here for King of Hyphens. But the Land Raider Redeemer has now been spotted by these Chaos Terminators here of Ace. 113 VPs to 137. Standguard Veterans going to get forced off here. Some more Standguards here for Kip Pythons. Now the Land Raider Redeemer is pushing out of base. This bond building gain a little bit low here at 943 HP. Standguards already forced off. Is that Terminators called in or is that a Venerable Dreadnought? Going to be a Venerable Dreadnought here. Going to be finishing off that one also Cannon Havoc Squad, which got caught out there by the Drop Pod. And the Land Raider Redeemer pushed in with the Venerable Dreadnought could really work out, especially if Blessing of the Omnizire is spammed or is used. But the Land Raider Redeemer and Dreadnought will need to be used very carefully against all these Orsa Cannons not to get caught out in the open. He needs to try and use the shot blockers and buildings as much to its advantage. Librarian going to be going in here. The Librarian going to get forced off by these Lightning Claw Terminators. The Librarian having 71 power melee damage, which actually gives them slightly more damage compared to a Lightning Claw Terminator model. The Terminator is going to try and force melee onto these also cannons here. Should be able to finish them off in range damage though. Storm Bolts is doing 30 DPS roughly per model. But actually going to get subjugated there by the light by the Chaos Sorcerer. Going to try and focus down that APO is getting so low right now. Vanguard veterans as well in the area, but don't want to do any friendly fire damage either. But those Mark of Zinch CSM are definitely going to be going down here in the end. Terminator is going to force melee on them, it's not even needed. The Venerable Dreadnought at bottom going to be able to finish off these Lightning Claw Terminators potentially, but actually decides to charge in instead into the base here. But these more also kind of set up, and now that the charge is on cooldown, this Venerable Dreadnought is extremely exposed right now. And that's the problem with the Venerable Dreadnought, once it's exposed, it was probably going to go down at this point. Ooh, it goes into Stoicism mode, and will give a lot of pushing power though to Blue Team for now, but Blue Team really needs to make this Venerable Dreadnought loss actually count. In fact, it's still alive. Might actually get repaired up in time. Chaos Lord is still in the area. Is getting the Dark Age technology upgrade. Really needed that extra bit of health sooner. Tech Marine is repairing, but it's now in Stoicism mode. It is going to go down fairly shortly. Vanguard Veterans now for King of Python is going to be jumping into the Land Raider Phobos with the Power Fist. Vanguard Veterans is trying to fight Lightning Claw Terminators on him, so actually do so. Lightning Claw Terminator Force Commander is also coming in as well to actually help out the APO with that Power Axe. Going to try and do what he can. And Imperial Abyss once again going to be killing some Sniper Scouts there in the area. The Vanguard Veterans just outside. 
the nuke as well going to be sitting on top of that land raider redeem the land raider four is going to be pushing in the apo going to be retreating through that nuke is going to barely live over all oh, somehow he actually lived through that Terminator Force Commander is going to try and chase in the base, really wants to kill these Lightning Claw Terminators. Lightning Claw Terminators did not go down for Ace, they actually remained alive. The Terminator Force Commander really trying to chase in, but in fact he might actually go down in the end because of the Land Raider Redeemer is game to force all the way back to base. Vanguard Veterans for King of Hyphens is going down, go down. Chaos Lord is going to remain alive. At the same time, Adilla's Terminator is going to remain alive as well. The Terminator Force Command does go down in the end. Vanguard Vest Reserve Cryptoda going to be jumping in. Only to be met by the Dirge Caster. Going to be getting stunned by that Land Raider Redeemer. The Librarian is coming in for some melee support, but the Vanguard Vest has taken too much damage. The Force Barrier is going to go off instead onto the Orsa Cannon Havoc. Vanguard Vest is desperately trying to focus down that Land Raider Forbes. Going to be jumping onto the Orsa Cannons instead. Librarian is going to be running around here. Doesn't look like he wants to go into melee combat. I don't blame him against these lightning claw terminates. 113 DPs to 43. Smite is going to go down, but his librarian is going to go down here to the terminator squad here. And Vanguard Veteran is going to be trying to fight these Terminators now. Terminator is going to be teleporting out the area. Stand guards with the Kraken rounds are in the area as well. The Vanguards are a bit split right now. For some reason, I can't actually see where their leader is. I can see where the remaining members are. One of the Vanguard mods is actually stuck on that Land Raider for us. There's an Orbital awesome Bombardment about to go down onto the for us as well. Going to be catching out the Terminator Force Command. He's been repurchased once again. And Pure Abyss going to go down at the Land Raider Redeemer as well. Cyclone Missile Launcher. That Phobos is going to be able to barely live. The Land Raider Redeemer is going to be backing out of that nuke as well. Predator is also out for a dealer. The Phobos does live. The Land Raider Redeemer forced him back to base. Lightning Claw Terminator is trying to go in. Terminator is going to be defending the area at the same time. Red Team now control of the top VP. Red Team on 27 VPs. And Apo going to go down here as well as he remained in the fight and didn't get the message that everyone has backed out of the fight with all the nukes going down. 101 VPs for the Space Marine players, 27 for the Chaos players. Chaos Terminator is going to be going in here for the Terminators, the Chaos Lord is going to do fairly well with the icon of corn going to be healing up quite a lot but overall going to be taking far too much damage and is forced to retreat back to base mc bin Laden going to be getting another well when cyclone missile launcher going to be doing a lot of damage but i think it should have get should have been used on the predator instead of on the infantry though since it does insane amounts of damage to vehicles the stand guard veterans are unable to actually stand up against the mass auto cannons terminator force commander armed with that heavy flame but once again not going to be doing too much to heavy infantry if they were a bit more grouped up, then Heavy Flame would have been a best purchase, but these also cannons are not so grouped up. And the Force Commander will go down, Land Raider has been spotted, that is still up, and another Orbital Bombardment is also going to go down at the same time. Going to be catching out some Heretics and Havocs, a second set of Havocs, and a, and a third one is actually going to miss completely. And that's going to wipe an also cannon squad, going to be wiping a Heretic squad as well, Librarian is going to go down here once again. Cyclone Missile Barrage is going to go down once again. Going to be missing that Land Raider for us for the most part, though. At the same time, Lightning Claw Terminator is coming in here for Ace as well. Going to be focusing down those ranged Terminators with Cyclone Missile Launcher, the Heavy Flame, and Terminator Force Commander coming back in once again. Terminator Force Commander needs to force melee on these Chaos Terminators. Ring needs to help out these ranged Terminators, but instead he just wants to go in and teleport and try and burn down some Chaos Heretics. But the Terminators though for Cryptolo are going to go down, didn't look like they have their teleport available at the same time. Auto Cannon is trying to focus down that Land Raider Redeemer at the same time. In top, Vanguard Veteran is going to be fighting Lightning Claw Terminators. Terminator Force Commander is in the area. Apo going to needs to heal up those Vanguard Veterans, but unable to actually do so. The Tech Marine with the Plasma Gun and Plasma Tactical Marines as well in the area for Cryptolo. Stand Guard Veteran is going to capture that top VP as well. 64 VPs, 25 Chaos players really start motoring if they actually want to stay in this game. At the same time, Chaos Lord is actually going to get a decap and natural requisition to stop the VP bleed. 64 Four points for Space Marines, 23 for Chaos Dirge Caster going to go off once again, going to stop those Vanguard veterans from finishing off the Land Raider Phobos and at the same time Terminator Force Commander might go down once again, 8 HP will go down, Vanguard veterans try to force melee once again onto that Land Raider Phobos, the Land Raider Redeemer is driving in, the Land Raider Redeemer is quite low, Angels of Death is activated, also Cannon Havoc though focusing down those Vanguard veterans that are reinforcing because of how close the Land Raider Redeemer is and now the Vanguard's going to be switching focus to these Auto Cannons here. At the same time, Terminator's called in here for a Dilla, a second Terminator call, and Drain Life is getting used on the Terminator Force Commander, I believe. But the Terminator Force Commander not caring too much about it, and now there's a Chaos Lord needs to focus down this Chaos, and uh, needs to focus down this Terminator Force Commander.
Vanguards and the APO, now four star for Tactical Marines, going to be able to finish off and also kind of have a squad with the help of some Stand Guard veterans, Chaos Lord retreating away, the Land Raider Redeemer still alive, but there's actually only a single scout squad for repair support now for the blue team. Chaos Terminators for Adela still remaining in the area, but look at Quartz out right now as they're a bit outnumbered. The red team also making a push for top as well. Some chosen plague marines going to be fighting some plasma tactical marines. Chosen plague marines should have the tankiness to last against a tactical marine squad. Is this another venerable dreadnought? It is going to be a venerable dreadnought. 51 VPs to 10 VPs. The chaos players are so close to winning or losing this. Vanguard veterans desperately going to go and to try and defend the natural VP. They're actually going to get a decap. No, they're not going to get decap. Going to get a decap just in time before the Terminator squad is going to go down. Terminator sacrificed for that decap to actually stop the VP bleed at the same time, and they show no no fear is getting used here, which gives them a 50% special chance. Touch of Nurgle is also used onto these chosen Plague Marines as well, which isn't going to help out too much because they're not going to be able to bleed any models. The Plague Champion is able to actually cap. Does have that armor pestilence, so he's immune to knockback as well. Android Redeemer now getting repaired here. Vanguard Veterans going to be jumping into the air, but the Chaos Sorcerer is going to subjugate them as soon as they jump in here. Going to be wasting some energy there on the Merciless Strikes. They can't jump once again. And now going to be walking them towards Plague Champion and Chosen Plague Marines, where they'll be able to freely fire the Chaos Terminators for a Dilla going to be coming into the area. Some more Terminators going to get called in at topside. This time for a Cryptola to try and actually help out, but Ross of Nurgle is getting used, so the Vanguard is going to be a zombie army soon, but the heal coming in from the Ape, the Ape with the Power Axe is going to be engaging here. Going to be using the armor they've half carrying to actually heal up all the units. Meanwhile, the Vanguard veterans should be able to remain in the fight for a little bit longer. Venerable Dreadnought though is coming in once again. Sandguard Veterans desperately trying to go in for a cap onto the natural VP but getting knocked away by the Chaos Terminator by the Chaos Lord sorry and the VP will remain in control of red teams who are on four VPs right now and they shall know no fear getting used on Sandguard Veterans. That Chaos Lord is taking a lot of damage but should be able to live overall. Down to just 30 HP that Venerable Dreadnought is really doing a lot of damage at the same time in top Cryptodio has lost or has had his vanguards back away. Terminators are going to be back in the way as well. The APO has actually gone down in that engagement. The stern guards are able to actually stand up against all this also kind of fire. Lightning Claw Terminators coming once again. The Land Raider Redeemer in the area of scouts trying to repair as much as possible. Venerable Dreadnought is going to be coming in as well. 18 VPs to 4 VPs. A great and clean one now called in here for Ace as well. Lightning Claw Terminators trying to chase down that Tech Marine. Blue team unable to actually get this VP, unable to get the top VP. It's actually going to be game. The Chaos players are going to actually succeed and going to win this game. The Mass also Cannon is going to be a bit too much here in the mid game, followed up by the massive Terminator v Terminator battle. Hope you enjoyed this Space Marine vs Chaos Faction War.